Hello, welcome to Sigma Tech Learning Hub. I'll be your instructor for government. For this class, we are going to be taking our exercises from the exam guide app. If you don't have the application already installed on your device, I want you to download the app in order to follow along in this class. Exam Guide is a leading educational app that helps students prepare adequately for various exams like UTME, post-UTME, WASE, GCE, KCPE, IJMB, JUPEB, Calbipedia, BESE, JSCE, NCEE, NECO, ETC. You can download the app from www.examguide.com or Google Play Store. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to be updated on new videos. Ready for today's class? Okay, let's get started. Yeah, in a modern democracy, which is representative democracy, we choose our leaders. We don't have everybody assemble in one place to make decisions about governance of the society. <clears throat> so we are going to discuss the parameter by which our leaders emerge, that is election and electoral processes. Now by the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain the meaning of elections, uh, state the purposes, that is importance, why we do elections, state the meaning of suffrage, Let's call the types of elections, state what franchise and the purpose of franchise is, then state and explain the types of franchise. Now, let's look at the meaning of election. What is election? Mm -hmm. Election is simply defined as a democratic process by which people choose their leaders or representatives by voting. So, <coughs> it is something, a process that takes place within a democratic setting because it's obtainable only in democracy. And what people do here is to choose. And they choose their leaders, representatives, even at times make decisions. And what makes this choosing different from others is that it is done by voting. So voting, in this case, makes election different from other forms of uh, choosing. Now, let's look at the papers. Why do we do elections in our societies? Number one is, promotion of the practice of democracy. A democracy in modern time, which is representative democracy, is not complete without um, election. There must be election because leaders emerge through the process of election. People choose their leaders because everybody cannot be in the government at the same time making decisions. So it promotes that democracy. Then it gives people the room, the opportunity to make decisions about those that will rule or represent them. It gives people that opportunity to decide who will represent them in government, since all of them cannot be in government. Now, it enables and promotes the expression of public opinion. When we talk about public opinion, we talk about the expressed view held by people, held by the citizen, held by majority on public policies or issues that affect the state. So it enables people to express their opinion. The opinion could be about whether they like a particular party to continue to be in power or to leave the power. Now it confers authority. Election is the means by which authority or mandate is conferred on public officers. Then it confers legitimacy on public officials and their actions. Legitimacy, of course, has to do with acceptability of people in power. So election actually confers that legitimacy, that acceptability and uh, supports even recognition by the people. It confers that to those in authority. Now, it makes for accountability of public officials because election is an instrument through which they can remove the gov a non-performing government. So it makes the government in power to account for its stewardship. Then it brings about easy change of government. That's the easiest means of changing any government in power. It's the easy means. Otherwise, you use violence in a military coup. So election is the platform 
through which a government can be easily, without any form of friction, removed from power or chain. Then, people exercise their political sovereignty, the absolute power that people have. It is during election mostly that they exercise that their political sovereignty. And that's why you see contestant the candidates humble themselves during electionary period. Now, it is also the best platform to choose a leader. Leaders are chosen during election. And also, election promotes political participation. During election, people participate in different ways. They can be contesting, they can join political parties, they can support political parties, they can build, which is the most popular. They can engage in debates, they can attend rallies, campaigns of uh, political parties and their candidates. So it promotes and boosts political participation of citizens. Now, let's look at the types of election. There are different types of election. And you should be able to know hey, whenever election is conducted, the type that is actually holding. Number one is what we call direct election. Now, in this case, what happens? In direct election, people, the electorate, vote their representatives themselves or their leaders themselves. Nobody is voting on their behalf. They will come out on election day and cast their votes themselves. Nobody is doing it for them. So this type of election where they are directly involved in casting their votes is what we call direct election. Many countries do that. During election, the citizens will come and cast. They count the vote of the citizens. Now, the opposite of it is what we call the um, indirect election. And what is indirect election or electoral college? Now, this is where the electorate elect a group of electors that we call electoral college to vote on their behalf. So in this case, the citizens, the electorate, we elect a group of persons. Now, this group of persons will go and vote on their behalf. In America, they practice indirect election for the election of their president. <clears throat> now, we also have what we call by-election. And what is this by-election about? Now, by-election is an election held to fill a vacant seat in the parliament. Are there death, disqualification, or resignation of a parliamentarian? Now, when you know the members of the parliament, because this election applies only to the legislature. Now, when a, a, along the line, a member of the legislature can resign, a member of the legislature can die, a member of the legislature can be recalled by the people that elected him. They can be recalled. That's how they remove him from power, to recall the person. Can be disqualified for one purpose or the other. Now, when we have such situation, the people have the right to be always represented in the parliament. Now, the electoral commission will organize an election in this constituency. We are members of the constituency. We vote to replace that representative, that uh, parliamentarian. Now, this is what we call by election. So, whenever there is a vacant seat in the legislature, a by-election will be conducted to fill the vacant seat. We also have what we call runoff election or second ballot. And what is it? Now, a second ballot or runoff election is an election that is conducted when no candidate wins in a general election. It's possible that an election can take place and after counting the vote, no candidate wins. Example. Yeah, you have an electoral system that we call absolute majority, where a candidate must win up to 51% vote. That is absolute majority of all the vote cast. Now, in a first or multi-party system where you have up to four or five strong political parties, one particular party may not win that absolute majority. So in such case, the two highest person can go for what we call runoff or second ballot. 
So this is the election that is held in this context when there is no winner or when there is a tie. You can talk about runoff election to determine a winner. Another form of election is what we call primary election. And as you hear about primaries, party primaries. Now, a primary election is an election held within a political party for the emergence of parties, flag bearer, or candidates. So this is an election that is conducted within a political party. Political parties will conduct an election so that from this election, they can get a flag bearer or candidate of the party. You know, when you talk about president, people from a particular political party, there must be, in most cases, more than one person that have been interested to represent the party. Now, what do you do as a party? The party will now organize an election from which they can have the person that will represent them as a candidate in that election. That is what we call party primary. And you must note that the contestant within this election, this uh, primary election, the contestants are called aspirants. So when you hear that somebody is a former presidential aspirant, it means that that person had contested within a political party to be, he has aspired to be the candidate of that party. So the winner, of that party, that election is what we call the candidate. Now, there is another type of election we call plebiscite. At times, it is used interchangeably with uh, um, referendum. We also call it plebiscite. Now, this is an election where people vote on public issues that affect their country rather than on people. So, in this case, people will come to do what we call a yes or no vote there will be a proposal, a proposed public issue to be implemented by the government. It could be constitutional. Now, people will come out and do a yes or no vote. At the end, either yes or no wins it. That's what we call referendum. There was a time Ireland did some countries have conducted referendum to decide on sex-sex marriage. In Nigeria, it took a referendum that was conducted before the independence for Northern Cameroon to join Nigeria, while the Southern Cameroon joined the Republic of Cameroon. Now, we also have what we call general election. Now, it's an election where almost all members of a given political body are elected simultaneously. What do we mean by this? It's a situation where every member, every part of the country is doing that election at the same time. Example, uh, presidential election in Nigeria is usually a general election because it's holding at the same time in all parts of the country. Now, the opposite of a general election is the type of election that we call staggered election. Now, this is a type of election where one part of the country or one section of the country holds election differently on different dates. Example, our governorship election in Nigeria is uh, general because we do it at Senate, but some states are now isolated in the election. They do it in a separate date from the general one. They do staggered election. We have staggered election in Anambra states. Governorship election is a staggered one. We have in Ekiti state, we have in Edo state, Kogi state, and some other states. So these elections that are one particular place in the country go in for election. We call it a staggered election. We also have what we call supplementary or inconclusive election. It's an election held when an election conducted is declared inconclusive by the electoral body. Nigerian electoral law states that when the margin between the person that has the highest vote cast and second run-up is less than the number of cancelled votes or cancelled uh, areas, then there will be what we call inconclusive election to conduct in, in those places where election did not hold because it can make a difference. We also have what we call rerun election. Now, rerun election is an election held when an election is cancelled or declared null and void by a judicial body or a body acting in the same capacity. So when a court declares that 
an election for um, probably irregularity, and the court declares it null and, null and void, and orders for rerun. We conduct an election called rerun election. You do everything entirely again. It's different from the second ballot where the same candidates will be there. Uh, um, in second ballot, you talk about just the first and second, or at times the third can go for second ballot. But in this case, everything do it afresh about the election. Now, let's look at the concept of suffrage. Now, suffrage is simply the privilege, or opportunity, or right of a qualified person or citizen to vote in an election. It's simply the right to vote. Now, let's look at a related concept term that is used interchangeably with suffrage, and that is franchise. Franchise, on the other hand, is the political right of a qualified adult citizen of a country to vote and be voted for. So while suffrage is strictly about the right to vote, franchise, on the other hand, is the right to vote and be voted for. So granting the right to vote and be voted for is what we call to enfranchise, enfranchisement. Denial of that right is what we call disenfranchisement. Now let's look at the purpose of franchise. Why we give people are given the right to vote and be voted for one, it confers political right on the people. You know, when we talk about political right, the right to vote and be voted for is the major one. So it confers it on the people. It grants citizens the opportunity to participate in the affairs of their state. Participate by contesting and uh, voting. It gives the citizen the right to make, um, it makes elections democratic. Also, it enables legitimacy to be conferred on elected officials when citizens participate and exercise their franchise. Now, let's look at the conditions or qualifications for franchise. Now, what will make you to have this right to vote and be voted for? Number one is what we call citizenship. You must be a citizen of that country. It's because it's a civic right. You must be a citizen of the country to uh, be vote, uh, to vote and be voted for. Two, age, you must be up to age. Most countries will tell you 18 years to vote. To be voted for depends on the office in question. Example, some countries can say before you become a president, you must be up to 40 years, governor up to 30 years, 35 years. So it depends. So age is a factor. Also, education is also a factor, a condition, in most cases, for you to be voted for. Most countries specify, specify the um, educational qualification you must meet for you to contest for election for an office. Also, being a person of sound mind qualifies you for franchise. You, you, you must not have mental problem. Also, you must uh, not have a criminal record. An ex-convict is automatically disqualified from com uh, contesting for election in most countries, if not all the countries. Ex-convicts, if you're convicted by the court, found guilty, sentenced by the court, you are denied the right to vote, uh, to go be voted for. Also, bankruptcy, if you're satisfied debtor that you cannot pay. Of course, the country in most cases will not allow you to contest for election. Also, residence is a condition. The place you're contesting for, you must be a resident of that place. Then, tax payment. If you're contesting for election, you must show evidence of tax that you have been performing your civic duty, contributing to the economy of the state by paying tax. Also, registration is a fact. You must register as a voter first. Then, if you're contesting, for you to contest, you must be a registered member of a political party. You must have registered your aspiration with that party and participate in their primary. So these are the conditions or qualifications for franchise in democracy. Now, let's look at types of franchise. We have what we call limited or restricted franchise. Now, 
this is a type of franchise where the right to vote and be voted for is strictly restricted or restrictive based on on criteria like sex the gender of the person the status your class now the sex is where they say okay it's only the male that can vote in the past it used to be in some countries it's like that status uh, they say okay people of the upper class the elites are allowed to participate in an uh, electoral process property they say you must obtain um have property up to this level example in nigeria in clifford constitution of 1922 they say you must have up to 100 pounds per annum that's your income level must be up to that for you to participate in the election also age it could be based on age you must attend a particular age it must be from where they have racism they can give race as a condition education can be a condition also some countries religion can be a condition now let's look at merits of limited franchise why some countries practice it one it allows only people who are informed and have sound mind to vote people who are educated people who are in the elite class and participate in the affairs of the state that understand the issues to actually participate or vote in an election now people with enough resources to contest are given the opportunity so that we won't have people who don't have resources and somebody will sponsor them and be their godfather. At the end of the day, instead of doing what he wills, he will be doing what the godfather has willed. Now, there will be less violence during such election. Now, let's look at the demerits of a um, limited franchise. One, it denies people their right to vote. Their voting rights are denied. Because you're telling somebody because of gender, because of property, the person can't vote, even when the person is a qualified adult. It's undemocratic because it denies people that freedom to participate in the affairs of their state. And at the end of the day, you find out that only few people, not majority, will elect those in power. Then there's limited political education where you have limited franchise then there will be lack of legitimacy of the government. The reason being that only few people are electing the government and it's not coming from the mandate of the majority. And therefore, the government lacks the mandate of the majority, which makes it not to be legitimate. Then, it limits political participation because it grants only few people, few persons, the right to vote and be voted for. So, those that are disenfranchised cannot participate. Of course, this system brings a party, lack of interest in political affairs. Now, this is about those who have been disenfranchised. Now, those that have been disenfranchised will not have interest in the affairs of their state. Now, the second type of franchise is what we call unlimited franchise or universal adult suffrage. Now, this universal adult suffrage is a type of franchise where all qualified adults have the right to vote and be voted for. So there is no form of restriction. The only restriction in most cases where you have universal adult suffrage is age. So that's why we call it universal adult suffrage. It must be an adult of the age specified by the constitution of the country before you can participate in the electoral process. Now let's look at the merits of having universal adult suffrage. It grants equality to vote to all qualified adults. They all have that equality. So it promotes equality in a state. It, enhanced political, it enhances political participation because everybody has the right to vote and be voted for. Then it is democratic. It is democratic because people can fully participate in the affairs of their state. It avoids all forms of discrimination. There's no discrimination based on sex, based on race, based on education, based on class, no form of discrimination in the system. So it promotes equality. There's stability in government because everybody is participating and that government has legitimacy. Then there's national consciousness or patriotism because everybody, all adults, are carried along in the electoral process of their state and in the political processes of their state. 
it reduces cor corrupt tendencies in election because everybody, every adult is involved. So it reduces that rigging of election. Then legitimacy is conferred on the government because majority of people are participating. So the government can easily have the mandate of the majority of citizens, which brings about legitimacy. Now, let's look at the demerits, the problems associated with universal adult suffrage. One, it emphasizes quantity over quality of votes. Now, what do we mean? We have a situation where illiterates, people who don't know the issue, ignorant people, will come out and vote. And at times, their vote will be the one to determine the fate of the country. So it emphasizes quantity, number over quality. Remember, the uh, restricted franchise emphasizes quality. This one emphasizes quantity. That's a problem. Another one is illiterates and ignorance are allowed to vote blindly. They don't know why they are voting. They don't know the candidate they are voting. They may not know the issue. They can't assess the candidates and they are voting blindly. Then there's lack of scrutiny of voters or, I mean, candidates by the voters. The voters don't actually scrutinize the candidate because we have many of them illiterate and ignorant. There could be violence during election because everybody participates. Then unqualified representative by majority of illiterate voters. Now when voters vote blindly, illiterate voters, ignorant vote blindly in the election. The representative that will come up from that may be unqualified. Then <clears throat> the government produced through this means may be mediocre in outlook. Now, thank you. We are done with this electoral process. Now we are going to uh, app exam guide. We want to do practice on what we have studied. Now for the year we choose random. Now, topic of interest, we choose topics related to what we have done. You can see elements of government, the electoral system, process, processing and electoral management body, and also election. Franchise is chosen, even election is chosen. Now we click OK. After clicking the topics of interest, we get started. So we are going to answer those that has to do with what we did today. Now. I show you, okay. An election held to determine important constitutional issue is called what? Is it a general election? No. Is it a county election? It's a referendum. That's the election. Here you don't elect human, but you want to make important decisions. Now, the plurality system of voting could be described as A. Complex voting. Okay, we didn't do this. Now, the right of citizens to vote and be voted for in an election is called its franchise. Is what we did today. Now, which of the following factors limit universal adult suffrage? Remember, we say universal adult suffrage. Every qualified adult is granted the right to vote and be voted for. The only hindrance to that is age. For an election to be free and fair, okay, we didn't talk about this. We are looking at the topics we did. Now, indirect election is best described as A, as A, only women electing electors, no. B, only adults electing legislators, no. C, electoral college electing legislators, D, the citizens electing legislators. Rather, we have electoral college. Remember, we say that a body is elected by the people who in turn vote on behalf of the people. So that body is what we call electoral college. And that's why the correct answer is electoral college electing legislators. Now, free and fair election is necessary for, okay. Now, elections are conducted to A know the number of people in a country, B, know the social amenities in a country, C, provide permanent employment for the people, D, make the people choose their leader. Primarily, it's about making people choose their leader. Thank you for participating in today's class. 
we can practice more questions using the exam guide app. The app scores and gives a detailed explanation of all questions at the end of your practice test. You can learn a particular topic of interest with different modes like study mode, mark mode, and the practice mode. It also has other features that make learning fun. It is a must for all serious students. Download from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, and share the video.